welcome to the course Excelling with Mathematical Modeling. In today's lecture, we will be learning about the arm race model. So, what is this arms race? Consider two neighboring countries, say India and Pakistan, and the amount of money that we spend on arms, say let like XT be that amount of money and YT is that amount of money which is spent by our respective countries to buy arms. So, what is this arms race? See, basically it gives you the idea that how much arms and ammunition the one country possesses. So, during the Republic Day, we display our arms to the whole world. So, they get an idea, okay, this country is secured. Uh, they have enough arms and ammunition. Uh, enough technology, enough warfare practice uh, which can be used if they suddenly attack. And that some sort of create uh, some sort of fear among the neighboring countries. And then what they do, they also try to buy the uh, spend money and buy several arms and also display them in public. Uh, so, the idea is that then there is a competition of buying arms among the two countries and hence this arms race model. So, to build the first model and as the models are based on assumptions, so the first assumption is the more one country spends on arms, it encourages the other to increase its expenditure on arms because then the country becomes a bit nervous, they see that the other countries have so much arms, so much uh, technology and there is a mutual fear. So, while building the model, you have to assume that each country spend on arms at a rate which is directly proportional to the existing expenditure on other nation. So, if other country is spending y amount, the country x is also spending a proportional amount of money which is dependent on that y. So, if we want to represent that with the form of differential equation, then if x is the amount which the country A is spending, it is proportional to the expenditure of y. y is the amount which the country B is spending, so it is proportional to what amount country A is spending and alpha and beta are the proportionality constant and they are taken to be positive. Now, if we solve this model, so this is very simple, what you have to do is you just differentiate d 2 x d t square is equal to alpha times d y d t and substitute this d y d t here that is alpha beta x. So, you get d 2 x d t square minus alpha beta times x equal to 0. Now, to solve this kind of second order differential equation, you have to take let y equal to sorry in this case x equal to some a e to the power m t be our trial solution. Where your a not equal to 0. So, you substitute it here dx dt will give you a m e to the power m t d 2 x dt square will give you a m square e to the power m t. You substitute d 2 x dx d square and x here and you will get a m square e to the power m t minus alpha beta a e to the power m t equal to 0. So, a e to the power m t common m square minus alpha beta equal to 0, a not equal to 0, there is no value of m for which e to the power m t is 0. So, m square is equal to alpha beta and m is equal to plus minus square root of alpha beta. So, the solution to this differential equation will be x t equal to some a 1 e to the power root of alpha beta t 
plus some a2 e to the power minus root of alpha beta times t. In a similar manner, you can show y t equal to some b1 e to the power root alpha beta times t plus some b2 e to the power minus root alpha beta times t, where a1, a2 and b1 and b2 are arbitrary constants. So, we have a solution. So, I will quickly show you uh, the numerical values of this solution and then we discuss this. So, quickly I will use the Microsoft Excel to show the solution of this particular differential equation. Okay. So, I already have done the solution just but just to show you, I copy this to and I paste it here. So, at time t equal to 0, I assume that let the country x spend say 50 crores on the arms and country b also spends 50 crores. So, first is say 100 time steps. So, this is equal to 0 plus 1 and I drag it say till 100, sorry. I'll just increase the font size so that it is easy for you to see. Let us make it. Now, to calculate this, we will use Euler's method. The formula is given here. So, this is equal to. So, I have already chosen this is the set of equation dx dt equal to alpha y, dy dt equal to beta x. The initial values are 50 and 50, alpha is 0.4, beta is 0.3, and h is 0.1. So, this will be equal to first x0, the initial value, this plus h times this. Now, this is a constant. So, I will put a dollar here and I put another dollar here, h times multiplied by. So, you put a star when it is a multiplied in the bracket f x 0 y 0. So, alpha times this is alpha multiplied by y which is this. Now, since alpha is also a constant, I put this as a dollar here, another dollar here and I close the bracket and enter. So, I get this particular value. Similarly, let me get this value. This is equal to y0 plus h, which is again a constant. So, I put the dollar multiplied by beta, which is 0.3, again a constant. multiplied by x0. I close the bracket and enter. So, now what I will do is at the same time I will press shift and the right cursor so these two are highlighted and you drag this to the values till, till the desired value which you have given here. In my case it is 98. So, this is a bit time consuming actually, but I mean the idea is that so that you can learn at the same time that how you are going to plot the numerical results. So, that is why this result is already here, but then I just show you using this. Now, you have to plot this. So, select this all these three using your down cursor, you go up to the calculated value up to here 
and then you have to plot, go to insert and choose this scatter diagram and choose this one. So, you get this same graph. So, this is your series 1, the blue one, the orange one is series 2. If you want to change the title, you just go here and type arms race model. If you want to change this series, you highlight this, go to this chart design, then select data and this will open. So, here is your series 1, highlight it, go to edit and type whatever you want. In this case, it is XT, OK and series 2, edit and in this case, it is YT, OK and OK. So, you get this curve and this is XT and this is YT, the amount which is spent by the respective countries. So, let us go back to the lecture. This particular solution, you can see that as your, you can see that as your T becomes large, then this goes to infinity, this goes to 0. So, your xt goes to infinity. And similarly, as t becomes infinite, this goes to infinity, this goes to 0. So, your yt also goes to infinity. This is exactly what is reflected in the numerical solution that we have just done. So, your xt, which is this curve, xt, and this is your yt we have the numericals here. It starts with 50 crores from here and it goes on increasing, so exponential, where xt is your amount spent by country A and yt is the amount spent by country B. So, what is the conclusion? So, the conclusion is that as t becomes large, your amount which is spent also starts growing infinitely, not at all a very good model because no country can survive that if they only spend the money on the arms because they have to look into the infrastructure, into the growth, into look into the people and other necessities of the country also. So, from this particular model, we see that both the countries A and B spend more and more money on arms with increasing times and no limit on the expenditure. So, the economy of the country will be compromised if you follow this particular model and hence this particular model is not at all recommended. So, once we have this conclusion from this model, you have to modify the model. So, what is the modification here? So, initially it was uh, assumed that each country spends at a rate which is directly proportional to the expend existing expenditure on the other nation. So, now with this, one more thing is added. So, the rate of change of country's expenditure will also be directly proportional to its own expenditure. Then, how the model changes? So, what we get is here. So, this was the initial part where this country A the spending on the arms depends on what country B is spending. But now at the same time, it rate of change of the country's expenditure on arms will directly be proportional to its own expenditure. So, this is the amount which is spent on the growth on the infrastructure of the country and hence minus times alpha gamma times x. In the similar manner, this is the amount which has been chosen to spend on arms by country B, but then this is the amount which is needed to its own expenditure for the growth of the country and hence minus delta times y. So, this gives a modification of the previous model and we see that if we do a little stability analysis here. So, we can put this equation in the form, say in the matrix form, say ddt of x, y which is equal to 
So please note that this is actually minus gamma x plus alpha y. This is fine. So x comes first. So minus gamma alpha beta minus delta times x y. Where you take your a is equal to minus gamma alpha beta minus delta. So we can see that 0, 0 is the only solution here, only equilibrium solution provided gamma delta minus alpha beta is not equal to 0. So if 0, 0 is the solution, then what you are solving is this Ax equal to some 0 matrix. And for the unique solution, then det A is not equal to 0. So this is exactly the date A, which is the determinant A cannot be equal to 0. Only then you get 0, 0 to be the equilibrium solution. Now if you want to find the Jacobian matrix, in this particular case it is exactly this. And if you find the eigenvalue, that is A minus lambda i equal to 0. This is going to give you minus gamma minus lambda alpha beta minus delta minus lambda equal to 0. And if you simplify this, you get lambda square plus gamma plus delta into lambda plus gamma delta minus alpha beta equal to 0. So this is of the form, I put in different form again. I can write it in this form also, just to explain the routh hurwitz criteria, which says if it is of the form this plus a1 lambda plus a2 equal to 0. Then your condition is a1 must be positive, a2 must be positive. So these rates are already the positive quantities, so clearly this gives a positive. And for the system to be stable, this particular thing must be greater than 0. So again you can put it in this form and you can write uh, lambda square minus this thing plus this. In that case, your condition for stability will be this less than 0 and this greater than 0. But as I told you, you remember only one particular thing. So we will from now on, we will only consider this that it can be put in the form lambda square plus a1 lambda plus a2 equal to 0. So both this has to be put is a positive sign and whatever is left must be greater than 0. So this a1 must be positive, a2 must be positive and this gives the condition for stability and in this particular case the condition for stability is gamma delta minus alpha beta is greater than 0. So this particular model is stable but if you plot this. So what does this imply that you have this particular condition? This implies that the product of rate of depreciation. If you recall the model, so the model says that this is the amount which is spent on arms for country A and this is the amount which is spent on arms for country B and this is the amount which is spent on the country. So from the budget this amount is deducted from the budget of the arms and similarly from the budget of the arms this amount is deducted. So there is a depreciation and the rate of depreciation is given by this gamma and this delta. So the in the interpretation the product of the rate of depreciation which is gamma into delta on the expenditure of both the arms on expenditure arms on both the countries must be greater than the product of the rate of expenditure. So rate is again the expenditure which is giving you the actual money to spend on the arms. So for the model to be stable, the rate of depreciation must be greater than the product of the rate of the expenditure and then your system will be stable. So again you start with some 50 say crores and you see the since 0, 0 is stable, slowly the spend on 
arms, the budget on the spent on arms over a long period of time becomes 0. That means both the countries they have come to an agreement, okay, uh, we will live in peace and hence the budget on spending uh, money on the arms, they diminishes and diminishes and ultimately comes to 0. But then there was a better refinement of this model and it is done by Louis Fry Richardson. So, he is an English mathematician, a physicist, a meteorologist and he come up with just two terms. So, what he says is, this was the previous model from the previous model. So, what he says, okay, the rate of increase of countries armament that is the amount spent uh, on arms, they not only depend on mutual stimulation. By mutual stimulation, I mean that you have the mutual fear, what is the other country is spending. Then you have to look into your economy so that uh, it does not collapse and hence that give rise to this particular models for country A and country B. But then he introduced a factor which says that the permanent underlying grievance. So, between two countries there is always a tension, there is a war and some war or some uh, happenings we just could not forget. So, in our case, so there is a Indo-Pakistani war in 1965 where India has the upper hand over Pakistan when the ceasefire was declared. So, Pakistan may not be able to forget that. So, they have an underlying grievance. There is a Bangladesh liberation war in 1971, where there is a which Pakistan has to pay a heavy cost and ultimately Bangladesh was formed. They may not be able to forget that. We have a 2008 Mumbai attack which takes place in Taj Mahal Palace. We cannot forget that. Then there is an Uri attack in 2016. We may not be able to forget that. So, in this particular model, he just put two terms. R and S. And please note that no sign has been attributed to R and S. R can be positive, R can be negative. So, if R is positive, I still have the grievance. If R is negative, okay, over the time I have learned how to forgive the neighboring countries and my grievance becomes less and less. With this two terms, the whole dynamics of this model changes. So, now I solve this equation. That means, I find the equilibrium solution, I put this equal to 0, I put this equal to 0 and I will find the equilibrium solution. So, now 0, 0 is not the equilibrium solution, it is something different. But what remains same is the Jacobian matrix, that is if I differentiate this with respect to x, that is minus delta with respect to y alpha, with respect to x the second equation beta and this is minus delta. So, the stability condition remains the same that is alpha delta minus alpha beta has to be greater than 0. So, now we have to see at what actually is happening just by adding these two simple looking terms r and s whose sign can be positive as well as negative. So, now you solve these two equations for the equilibrium solution provided this is not equal to 0. In fact, it is greater than 0 because of the stability and you get this and this to be your new equilibrium solution. So, the characteristic equation remains same. This is greater than 0 and the system has to be stable. This is greater than 0 and we have the condition gamma delta minus alpha beta is greater than 0. Now, let us take various cases. This is needed for the stability and both the countries say have the grievance. So, I have this numerical values. I make sure that the, this particular condition is satisfied and the system is stable. And then I have chosen some value of R and S, both are positive. And if I plot this diagram, so you get it say 50 crores, you see that ultimately it comes to this equilibrium position. So, 
if you interpret this that okay both the countries are spending money uh, on arms in a strategic manner so that the economy of the country is also not compromised that is this solution does not go to infinite but over time it is coming to some particular value so looking at what the other countries are doing uh, how they are building up their defense the other country also uh, focuses on the on the arms but with a strategic manner so that the budget is there and the economy of the country is not compromised. Let us take when both of them less than 0. So, what is the mean if both of them are less than 0 that means there is no grievance among the countries. So, in this particular case what happens is that this is the equilibrium solution. Now, this is less than 0, this is less than 0. This particular thing is greater than 0 because for the system to be stable. Again, this is less than 0, this is less than 0. So, your equilibrium solution becomes negative. But there cannot be a negative equilibrium solution in this case because x and y represents the amount of money that both the countries are spending. So, what actually happens? So, if you are x0, y0, you start with initial expenditure which is 50 crores in our case, then it attends some x star and y star which is negative because you have taken r and s and if it wants to attend that x star y star which is somewhere here, it has to go through 0 obviously because the other is a negative quantity. So, if you draw the graph, you will get something like, so as your x t becomes 0, so what you do is in the equation, you put x t equal to 0, this equation. You put x t equal to 0 and you see what happens to y t. So, if you do that, you will get this particular equation. This is a first order linear equation whose solution will be of the form like this. So, basically what you have to do is you have to take this quantity here and this is equal to x. So, your integrating factor equal e to the power integration delta t which is dt. So, e to the power delta t. So, you multiply by the integrating factor both sides plus delta and this thing can be written as d d t of y times the integrating factor. So, you can remember this can be represented d d t of y times the integrating factor. So, that if you just differentiate uh, so, u into v, so the first term differentiation of the second which gives you this, the second term and differentiation of the first which is divided and this is equal to s e to the power delta t. So, y e to the power delta t is equal to integration s e to the power delta t dt plus some constant c1. So, this is going to give you y e to the power delta t is equal to some s by delta e to the power delta t plus c1 and if I divide it by e to the power delta t, I will get y t is equal to s by delta plus c1 times e to the power minus delta t. So, this is the solution and as your t becomes large, you will see your y t is going to some s by delta. So, s is less than 0, so it is going to some negative quantity. So, how do you interpret that? So, you see that at this, this is your 0. So, this is uh, this to line where your amount for country A goes to 0 and this is the amount for country B goes to 0. So, basically in reality they cannot go here because they cannot spend a negative amount on the on the arms. So, by that you will mean that both the countries 
once it reaches 0 has stopped spending on arms. They decided, okay, let us live in peace. Uh, whatever arms we have, it is enough for us to defend and this results in something called complete disarmament. That is, they are not spending any more money on arms and decided to live peacefully. The next case is where your one country has forgotten the grievance, but one country remembers it. So, what happens? So, in this particular case that one country have overcome the grievance and you have this particular equilibrium solution and if you want this solution to be positive, so obviously this must be greater than 0 and this must be greater than 0. This is always greater than 0 because otherwise the system would not be stable. So, if r is less than 0, so this particular thing has to be greater than 0, this particular thing has been greater than 0. So, what you will get? You will get a solution almost uh, similar to when both S is positive and R is positive, but since in this case R is negative, the value will be a bit less. So, that is why the conclusion is the system approach an equilibrium value which is less than the previous cases where both R and S is greater than 0. So, if you draw the graph, so this particular case where r is less than 0 and s is greater than 0. So, when one country has overcome the grievance which is r less than 0, it started spending less on armaments, this will have an effect on the another country and they will also start spending less to develop a mutual goodwill. So, you get some amount where the equilibrium point will take to. So, I put a similar graph here, the same when r is greater than 0 and s is greater than 0. So, if you notice these two values, the equilibrium values are larger than these two values, which is obvious because your r is greater than 0 here. So, it will reach a higher value of the equilibrium point and here r is less than 0, but still the system is stable. So, it will reach some lower value of the equilibrium point. So, that is all for this armrest model. In our next lecture, we will be taking some other interesting model. Till then, bye-bye.